Come on in. I was just looking through my bardic book for a good story to share with you guys. Since we're doing the SCA at home thing, I wanted to share my art with you. I see a lot of people sharing uh, fighting techniques and, and making making stuff, um, but that kind of leaves the entertainers of our society. Where does that leave the entertainers of our society? Well, I guess that leaves us here to share share with you online. Uh, so come on in, grab a seat, grab a drink, and uh, we'll get right to it. This is Story Time with Brother Grimm. Sir Justin and the Fairy Princess. Uh, now, a thousand years ago, way back in the prehistoric days of our society, there lived a young man called Justin. Now, Justin wasn't just some hero, oh no. Justin was the hero of man. A hero's hero. How great of a hero was he, you ask? Sir Justin once wrestled with the world serpent, which bit him, and after five days of excruciating pain, the snake died, and Ragnarok has been postponed ever since. When Arthur and his knights quested for the Holy Grail, they actually found the cup, but they never recovered it, because not one of those men was brave enough to ask Sir Justin to give up his favorite mug. Once upon a time, Hadrian's wall was built to keep Sir Justin out. And this is the absolute and completely true story of how he got over the wall and founded his house, House de la Rock, all at the same time. Now, one day, Sir Justin was walking up in the North Country, along the river Tyne, and he happened upon the most beautiful maiden he had ever seen, kneeling by the river with her arms elbowed deep in the water. As Justin approached the maiden, he noticed that she had a basket full of fish at her side, but there was not a single net nor fishing rod with her. Excuse me, he called out to her. I couldn't help but notice you as I was passing by. What are you doing out here alone, without guard, just you and a basket of fish? Now, the maiden spared our hero not a glance, but replied, I? I am Victoria of the Vales of Barnsdale. I'm here without guard because I need no guard, and I'm out here drowning fish for my father's supper. Drowning fish? That's impossible. I suppose it might be for you, but they taste so much better. And with that, she pulled her hands out of the river, clutching a drowned fish, and she tossed it into her basket. If you don't believe me, you can come to supper tonight at my father's house. She stood, picked up the basket of fish, turned on the spot, and with a flash of blue light was gone. Now, Sir Justin was keen of mind and knew that the Vales of Barnsdale lay just downstream from where he stood, over the tallest hill and through a grove of oak, ash, and thorn trees. He faced several challenges along the way, but that's a tale for another time, and eventually he found himself in the court of the Lord of the Vales of Barnsdale. <clears throat> now, Victoria's father, Hadrian, the Lord of Barnsdale, welcomed our hero into his hall and invited him to eat his fill, on the condition that he could tell an entertaining story that had never before been heard in his hall. Sir Justin, fresh from his victory over the world serpent, being the hero of many campaigns and great feats of strength, spun a tale for the assembled host of Fae and earned his seat at the table. After everyone had eaten their fill, Sir Justin spoke to his host, saying, Your Excellency, the drowned fish is truly a marvel and the best fish I have ever had. Your daughter was right and is the most lovely woman I have ever laid eyes on. I would ask you for her hand. And I would grant you your request, replied the Lord, for you seem to be a good man and a great hero, but sadly, that is not within my power to grant you. Confused again, Sir Justin asked the Lord, Your Excellency, if you lack that power, by whose right is it to give her hand away? And the Lord of Barnsdale laughed <laughs> and said, Victoria herself is the only person who can make that decision. 
You must ask her yourself. Now, our hero turned to ask Victoria for her hand, but found her facing him with one hand held up to stop him. If you are going to ask for my hand, by the laws of my people, you must bring me four things of my own request for the wedding. Something bold, something brewed, something stolen, and something stewed. She paused for a moment as she thought, I want an elephant to ride in on three casks of Lord Donovan's finest mead, the golden apples of St. Felix, and Banthane Tigra's best veggie stew. If you manage to collect all these things and return here in one piece, you'll find the tallest wall ever built protecting my father's realm. It will be well guarded, and you will need to overcome this obstacle in one go. If you don't, I will know, and I won't marry you. She clapped her hands three times, and Victoria of the Vales of Barnsdale, her father, the host, and the whole hall dissolved before Sir Justin's eyes, and he found himself again on the banks of the River Tyne, where he had first laid eyes on that fame beauty. <clears throat> A challenge issued. And never being one to back down from a challenge, Sir Justin began immediately. He had no trouble getting three casks of meat from Lord Donovan, or the veggie stew from Tigra, or even stealing golden apples from St. Felix. But since Justin had never heard of an elephant before, he had no idea where to find one. He began by asking Lord Donovan and Banthane Tigra, but neither of them had heard of an elephant before either. It was only when he posed his question to St. Felix himself that he was given any kind of answer at all. When he asked, the aged saint and goodly scholar produced a parchment with a depiction of a bird in flight, carrying something in its talons. I believe, St. Felix said, that elephants are a very small type of rodent preyed upon by this particular type of bird, the rock, and both of these creatures can be found far from here on the southern continent. So, Sir Justin traveled south, seeking the elusive elephantine rodent. One day, as he strode across the grasslands, he spied a young boy sprinting across the plains, a lion as close on his heels. Sir Justin drew his sword, took three great leaping strides, and hurled his sword at the lioness, which sliced her head clean off. The boy was grateful for the intervention, but spoke no language that Justin understood. So... Justin patted the boy on the head and sent him on his way. Eventually, he, Justin came to a village where a merchant was selling tame elephants. Our hero thought that this creature might come in some sort of small box or a cage that he could easily carry back to the Vales of Barnsdale. But the beast that the merchant led him to was so large that Justin doubted there was any cage big enough to hold it. The merchant showed Justin how to climb onto the elephant and the basic commands for riding it. And Justin rode the elephant from the village of Matimira all the way back to Hadrian's Wall. The wall was so tall that it touched the sky, and so long that it dipped into the seas on either side of the land. Archers were posted all along the wall and would shoot at our hero if he got too close. This was a problem because he had to, this was a problem because he had to scale the wall in one go or the beautiful Victoria would refuse to marry him. He had no idea how to get over the wall with his elephant and the other things that Victoria had requested he bring for the wedding. It was at this moment while Justin was pondering his plight that a squirrel scampered up to him and said, Sir Knight, you saved me once from a lioness, and I have followed you watching closely for a moment to repay my debt, and I will help you now. The squirrel, who Justin now realized was the boy from the plains he had saved, changed shape into a bird larger than any Justin had ever seen, the rock. Climb onto my back, Sir Knight, said the rock, and I will get you over this wall. Justin did as he was told, and once he had settled himself on the rock's back, the great bird took to the sky. 
it picked up the elephant in its massive talons and flew straight up into the air. As the rock climbed higher and higher, Justin felt the air thinning, getting colder and colder the higher they went. They had to fly so high to clear the wall and its archers, and it got so cold as they neared the top of the wall that Justin froze to the back of the rock. The rock cleared the wall and finally began his descent, Justin covered in a thin sheet of ice. When they landed in the Vales of Barnsdale, and Justin had dismounted from his perch atop the rock, he swept his hands across his brow to remove the ice that clung there and removed his own eyebrows in the process. When Victoria saw him, she thought him so funny that she demanded to marry him on the spot. Thus did our hero, Sir Justin, become known as Sir Justin du Rock, married a fairy princess, and founded a mighty house of Tariskathir, all in the same afternoon. If you'd like to hear more stories like this, like Sir Justin and the Fairy Princess, come on back. I'll be here telling you more stories written by me, inspired by the SCA, traditional folk and fairy tales, and other stuff, right here on the YouTubes. Now I get to do the YouTube thing. If you liked this story, please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe, and come back next time. This was Storytime with Brother Grimm. Thank you for being here.